I was born into a commercial beekeeping family in Paulding County, Ohio. Um, I was taught to draft when I was 14, 15, 16, some place along there. I remember as being about when I was early in high school. And uh, so when it comes down to queen rearing, uh, I kind of take things for granted pretty much. Uh, I still am not one of those persons who can photograph anything and put it in my brain and you know, automatically know when queens are emerging and that sort of thing, so I have to keep a calendar. My job today is to share with you the gender system. Uh, the gender system is, beekeeping has gone to a lot of plastic. Plastic frame, plastic boxes, you name it. Well, back in the 1970s, the gender system was developed, which basically is a cage. It's a, plastic box has an embossed back that resembles comb and each one of these uh, cells has an opening in the back and so the queen <coughs> can pass her abdomen down in through the cell and lay an egg into a cup that's fastened onto the back and then you can remove the cup and place it into a cell belt or hive. Okay? Very, very simple idea. Uh, the instructions that come with it leave a lot to be desired. Uh, you get uh, what amounts to a zero page or two. And quite frankly, uh, there are parts. There's the back part, there's the cage, and then there's a queen excluder front for this. And the way the cage really works is you put the front on, on the cage. That confines the queen. And uh, I'll spend a little time talking about how to get it going here in a little bit. But those are the big disadvantages. Plastic gets old. gets brittle. And if you have these for very long, it's not unusual to have the front break, trying to pry it off, because plastic, in other words, it doesn't come off all that easy. And I've broken one. Uh, I've got two boxes, one of them has a front and one doesn't. <coughs> but the reason why one doesn't have one is because I was pulling too hard. And unfortunately, I broke it and I couldn't super glue it back together. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pass that around over there. I've got one here to pass around. This is the one without the frame. Um, this one has, uh, what? Yeah, that one's got a front. Joe Kowaleski loaned me his uh, Jenner box uh, that's in a frame, and just uh, for a second or so, I want to share with you the idea that uh, you need to put this into a frame that fits down into your hive. Um, just if you look at the box, there are two little holes, oh. and you can take screws or nails and fasten it to a top bar. Wonderful things about this, though, happen. The medium frame, this box will snap right in between the top bar and the bottom bar. And it'll be no time at all before the bees glue it into place. So it's not going to fall out if you take it up and maneuver it. So if you use it with medium frames, it's going to be fine. Okay? Sometimes I, I give this talk several times, I end up thinking, well, uh, I miss something after other group walks out. But there are parts that go uh, with this system. Everybody can have You can buy these in bulk. You can buy them in 100 count bags or 1,000 count bags. This, this 
Yep, you can buy those. So, uh, this is a cell cup. You can take one of those, and you can keep one of these. Don't worry about it. Just pass it around and keep one of them, of course. Now, now, in order to place the cell cup onto a frame, you need a device to fasten it onto the frame. Now, you could just take a bead of wax and spread a bead of wax on top of a bar and set the cell right into the wax, hold it into place, and that would work. Uh, the only problem is this cell cup doesn't have anything to grip onto. So when my big fingers go down to try to remove a cell from the cell bar, you do damage to the cell itself. And so they have given you an attachment that you can put onto the cell bar that this cell cup fits right down into. And this then allows your fingers to come down below <coughs> the cell and work the, the cell out. Because, you know, that's the biggest problem with this system is your fingers are pretty fat when you come down to a little cell that's going to hold your queen cell. The bees will hold queen cells just fine from this cup. Okay. Uh, when you have queens or larvae of a different age that you we'll go into that in just a little bit the, the system also has a cage that is sold that fits perfectly onto the holder okay so you need to buy the cage you need to buy cell cups and you need to buy holders the kit that is sold in the magazines usually will have 10 of each. Have 10 uh, cell protectors, 10 holders, 10 cell cups. Guess what? If you are going to be using the Jenner system, you're going to need a couple hundred of these if you plan to sell any uh, or even more. So you need to go out and buy uh, additional, and you need more, more of these. Uh, these are something like 50 cents a piece. So you're going to have quite a bit of money invested in uh, getting the system. Hair curlers, I think, I don't know whether regular hair curlers would work or not, but these uh, cell protectors, they're like 60 cents a piece. So you're running almost a dollar or so per cell that you create. The more you use it, the less the cost is going to be. The, the, the initial startup income that's required is considerable. But you've got to sell some queens in order to make it profitable too. Okay. So How does it all work? I have a quick question. Yes. <coughs> These cups that are actually on this box have no bottom. I realize that. They slide up over the bottom of the back. This is supposed to slide over top of that, or no, no, uh, no, no, no. Uh, let me let me explain that. Okay, okay. Uh, we're going to get to that in just a minute. All right, all right. Okay. Uh, where you buy your equipment makes a difference. Okay. If you buy your Jenner kit from Man Lake, they're going to have a supplier that will provide you with cell cups that have a solid bottom. If you buy your system from somebody else, they're going to provide you with cells that have a hole in the bottom. Which means that queen lays an egg in there, it goes right straight through the hole, right? Well, there is, because of patent laws and so forth, a company making these other cells, it's got like a little post on the back that allows you to handle it a little bit easier. A different system of mounting it to a cell. Uh, and so, You've got to make sure when you are purchasing something from one of these vendors that you get it, you know, get the system that you bought. Okay. Because there is a difference in the cells. And what he's talking about are the cells that are in this bag. They're made out of glass. No, they're not made out of, they're made out of plastic, but they've got holes. 
uh, but they put holes in the bottom. And uh, so it requires an, e an extra piece yet. Yes. Okay. That, I hate extra pieces in yeah. knives. Okay. So just be wise. When you buy a Jenner system, it's going to be expensive. And when you buy a Jenner system from a supplier, when you switch suppliers, you need to check to make sure that what you have is going to fit whatever you buy. Or whatever you buy fits whatever you have purchased. Now, how am I going to use this thing? Understanding bee biology, the queen lays an egg and it's an egg for four days, right? Three days. Okay, very good. Just checking you out. See whether you've been listening. Okay. Um, the way we get larva is we introduce the queen into this cage. It's got an opening in the top, it's got a little plug. So I go in, I find my mother queen, I put her in this hole, and I enclose her. I have to take a frame out of that mother hive so I can slide this frame into it. This queen is going to wander around in here looking for a way out for several hours. It's not a natural thing for her. She's going to stress out. Yeah, she's going to be a little bit stressed. But she'll settle in and she will start laying eggs. May take her a day or may take her two days. Now, when you look through the back of this, and you think, okay, I, I don't know how many of you have trouble seeing eggs now. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a lot of trouble seeing eggs in here. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you look in the back, you see the mold pattern. Okay, that interferes with seeing an egg. Because if you look at that, it looks like a little egg right in the middle of the cell cap. So, the trick basically is install the queen in the hot, wait until she starts to lay, and then mark your calendar. Okay? Three days, we're going to have an egg. On the fourth day, we need to be checking. Right? Correct. Now, what I do, and I don't use the Jenner method much anymore. I used to use it because I thought it was a super great system from all the literature I read and decided that the new little system worked with me better. But you're going to have to decide for yourself whether you know you like a system like this. But I take the lid off. Somebody said, oh, the queen's going to get out. Yes, she's going to get out, but I'm holding the frame and she's going to be still in a frame so I can catch her again and put the lid back on. But I'm going to look down into these cells and see if I see any of the what I'm going to call royal jelly, the little white milky substance at the bottom of the cell. If I see that, it means that the bees have started feeding a young larva, not an egg. I, I may not see the egg, but I can see the young uh, milky substance that the larva is being fed. And I'd like to show you picture-wise uh, a few things about what we need to know when we use this system. Timing is critical. Queen comes along. Here is our cage. It's got a wall that comes down, something like that, maybe just a little bit in like that. And then we've got a cut that fits over that opening. Queen sticks her abdomen down in there and lays an egg. And an egg stands straight up. You notice that? Newly egg, laid egg stands straight up. Now as this egg ages and hatches, it'll lay over inside. When that happens, it's about ready to hatch. And when it hatches, the bees know. They will start filling this area with a little bit of royal jelly. I may not even see that young larva, but I can see the royal jelly. Now 
that's a white milky substance. That's the time to harvest this cell. That's the time to put this into a cell builder. However, here's our box. We have all these open cells in here. Please generally start in the center and move in a circular fashion when they lay. And so, theoretically, the younger cells are going to be here. Excuse me. The older cells are going to be here, and you're going to move toward the younger on the outer side. There may be as much as two days difference between the age of this young larva here and this one down here. And if I wait and take all of these out on the same day, I'm going to have some young larvae and I'm going to have some older larvae. And I guarantee you they're not going to all emerge from the cell at the same time. They will emerge at different times. And so you need that cell protector, you know. Now what you could do is you could take the magnifying glass and uh, take only the cells that have the milky substance in it and leave the eggs alone, you know, and then harvest them. But I'm going to tell you, that's a royal pain in the rear because there's one feature of this cage that you need to understand. If I've got all this loaded with cells in the back, and I'm looking at it, and I'm trying to figure out which one has got the milky substance in it, I'm not going to be exactly sure. And if I have to flip it over to take a look, these cell cups drop out. <laughs> okay? Uh, so, uh, it's a little bit easier to harvest a larger number of cells at a, what, you're going to have to make a decision. You know, some are going to be a little older, some are going to be a little younger, but harvest enough of them to make it worthwhile. And then use the curler, I keep saying the curler because my wife's got things that look like this, but hers aren't, but the, uh, the protectors, use the protectors so that you don't run into this problem of having all your cells cut down by that oldest queen that emerges from her cell. Because when she comes out of that cell, she's looking for her competition. She's going to find them and she's going to chew out the side of the cell and destroy all the hard work that you've tried to, tried to do. Okay? Now, uh, another little fact. Uh, Earlier this year, uh, did any of you meet Ron Hoops? Ron is the guy down in front, past president of Ohio State Beekeepers that was the MC. Okay, uh, Ron is a good friend of mine, and he's been involved in the queen process. But uh, we have another friend by the name of Dwight Wells, who's the president of West Central Ohio Beekeepers. The question came up, okay, we know this, you know, the age of a queen larva that's going to produce queen. We know that the bees are going to make a better queen if we get her as young as we possibly can. Well, how old of a larva can we graft that the bees will still make into a queen? So what we did is we went out and we grafted a couple of eggs. We grafted uh, some small larvae that we could just barely see. We grafted some larvae that we could comfortably see that were C-shaped. They looked like uh, something like that. I've been carrying my pen around without the protective cover on it. It's drying up. We grafted some larva that had almost reached a point where the nose and the tail were, were touching. And we grafted some big, big larva. Huge things. 
results for this. The bees cleaned out the eggs. They polished the cells. We could have used those again for grafting. They built queen cells from this. They built queen cells from this. They got rid of that one, and they got rid of that one. They prefer definitely to work with the youngest larva, and if, you know, this larva is uh, probably what I would say no more than 36 hours old, they would build something from that too. So if you're using this system, what you have to do is you have to know the age of the larva that's in one of these cell cups because if it gets to be too old, you're wasting your time. Okay, if you try to transfer eggs, you're wasting your time. Okay, questions? How would be the benefit to using this system over and The non-grafting. If you're non going to be using the Doolittle method to graft queens, you have to develop the technique over a period of time. It's a learned technique. Uh, all of you will get a chance to have a grafting needle and try to remove the larva from the cells. Uh, it takes good eyesight, takes good coordination, and it's not something that you learn overnight. Uh, it takes a lot of practice. Um, the Miller method might be better because it's a non-grafting method, very inexpensive, uh, almost foolproof. Uh, the hole punch method is a little more complicated, but it's also a non-grafting method. Uh, it's almost foolproof. The key thing is having a cell builder hive who will build good cells. And that's the key to everything in the clean rearing. If you don't have a good cell builder <coughs> and you don't have it provided with a lot of good food, you're not going to develop good queens. And the way I can tell whether a queen has been fed well or not is I look into the base. I look into the base of a cell cup. This thing should be almost filled with that white metal substance. Even after the queen has emerged from the cell, there should be a lot of food left in there. If it is empty, and I see the, the larva, I know it has not been well fed. So does that mean that that queen is weak, or could be weak, or sick? Uh, she could very possibly be born and lay eggs and so forth, but probably her life expectancy is not going to be as long. Uh, she probably is not going to be as uh, strong. You know, I mean, I'm, it's just like you take a child and you're malnourishing a child. Uh, if you have a child that's malnourished, they're not going to have the stamina to not play with the kids uh, and do the things that. Uh, you know, Ohio State wants to have football players. They take these guys to the dining room. Yeah. Now, for uh, the, the football players get a special diet. Mm -hmm. And people take care of them. Now, you and me, <laughs> uh, we may be on hamburgers or something like that. And the comparison is between queens and worker bees. The worker bees get the hamburgers, the queens get the good stuff. And when I say good stuff, I'm talking about 16-ounce steaks. Uh, you know, uh, they want those guys well-fed. They want those guys primed and ready. So that's the, that's the difference. Okay, anything else? Uh, the Jenner system does work. It does produce queens. And it takes a little while to get accustomed, but you can make mistakes and everything. You know, if you make a mistake, hey, all you need to do is take the back off of this and take your cells off if you've got bigger larvae and put them into a pan filled with water and just shake them up. Wash the larva out and start all over again. You haven't wasted any money. <laughs>